What are you? Hello people and welcome to the madness that is Mac in VR with virtual desktop version 1.25.1 giving an apparent 20% boost to wireless performance. I want to know the days of tethered PC gaming are at an end. The lovely people from AMVR have sent over a five meter link cable for me to test. So I'm going to pitch it headlong at virtual desktop and see who's the winner when the dust has settled. Excited? I know I am. So let's get straight into it then. And remember, we're born to respawn. I'm pitching the Quest 2 using Virtual Desktop against AMVR's link cable to see which performs the best, plus the not-so-technical personal opinion of, um, me. For reference, Virtual Desktop currently costs £15 in the UK. The AMVR link cable only costs £31 against the official Oculus cable at a frankly ridiculous £89. It also works with the Pico 4, and it has a little secret feature I've not seen before on any other link cable, so... Stay tuned to the end of this video to find out what that is, plus my overall conclusion, of course. This is a technical challenge, so I've tried to keep the virtual desktop and link settings as close as possible to avoid any anomalies. My PC specs are an Intel i9 9900KF, RTX 2080 Ti, 32GB of RAM. I have a dedicated router set up specifically to handle virtual desktop. Oculus Link uses the H.264 codec, so that is what I've chosen for virtual desktop. My virtual desktop settings are as follows. As per recommendation from the developer, automatically adjust bitrate is ticked on the PC streamer app. My settings in the streaming tab are as follows. VR graphics quality medium. This means the render resolution on virtual desktop is set at 2016 by 2012 per eye on Quest 2. VR frame rate, 90 frames per second. VR bit rate, 75 megabits per second. Sharpening, 75%. Gamma, one. Synchronous space warp, automatic. The link cable is connected via a USB-C port on the headset to a USB 3 port on my PC. Without resorting to the Oculus debug tool, which is a whole video by itself, the link options are a bit more limited on the Quest, so open the Oculus app, then click on Devices, Quest 2, Graphics, Preferences, we have. Refresh rate, 90 hertz. Render resolution, 1.3. This gives a resolution of 2064 by 2096 per eye on Quest, which is as close to virtual desktop on medium as I could get. Asynchronous space warp is on by default. All Steam VR settings are default with global render resolution set to 100% for all games to avoid any irregularities. To show real time performance in virtual desktop, I've ticked the show performance overlay box on the streaming tab and recorded the footage internally on the Quest 2. For the AMVR link cable, I have used Oculus Mirror with OBS to record gameplay and then overlay the performance graph using the Oculus debug tool. The word Oculus sprung up quite a lot in that paragraph, didn't it? The maximum transfer rate for virtual desktop is capped at 1.2 gigabits per second on a dedicated Wi-Fi 6 router. The AMVR link cable has a frankly absurd five gigabits per second transfer rate and can also charge the headset at two amps. That's all the technical gubbins out of the way. Let's go play some games. I'll be focusing on frame rate, latency, and what my squishy monkey brain interprets with my eyes to see which system is the best, in my opinion. Just for reference, virtual desktop measures latency via total motion to photon latency, while Oculus Link uses app motion to photon latency. So there may be a slight difference because of these two different measurements. I will be playing the stunning Red Matter 2, Auto Mobilista 2 for that seated experience, and finally the daddy, that is Half-Life Alex. My conclusion will follow this montage. This is Red Matter 2 on the Oculus PC app. Virtual desktop latency absolutely rock solid at 28 milliseconds with frame rate between 86 to 90 frames per second. AMVR link cable latency generally 39 milliseconds but did spike to 56 milliseconds at one point. Frame rate was locked at 90 frames per second. There's a power converter attached to the machine. It has the battery we need, but it's locked in place. All right, there's gotta be a way. This is Auto Mobilista 2 running on Steam VR. Virtual desktop latency was around 39 milliseconds with frame rate generally 90 frames per second with one small dip. AMVR link cable latency was 49 milliseconds with frame rate at 90 frames per second with a few small dips. <laughs> Ooh, 
This is Half-Life Alex, which is also running on SteamVR. Virtual desktop latency was around 29 milliseconds with one spike up to 36 milliseconds. Frame rate fluctuated between 85 to 90 frames per second. AMVR link cable latency fluctuated around 47 to 51 milliseconds with frame rate between 87 and 90 frames per second. Those are the facts, but how did my squishy monkey brain interpret this experiment? My feeling was that the AMVR link cable gave better visual fidelity than virtual desktop, despite the latency generally being 10 milliseconds higher. Though, as mentioned previously, this may be down to the different way that Oculus and virtual desktop measure latency. With virtual desktop, you do get a certain amount of artifacting, but it is only really noticeable by using the link cable, then immediately switching to virtual desktop. Both systems performed well throughout with consistent latency and frame rates. Plus, both were very easy and straightforward to use. Before I get to my conclusion, please remember to click the like button, the algorithm, loves the likes. Plus, you can subscribe and join my channel membership for custom badges, emojis, and exclusive game key giveaways. Thanks. So, which is best, the AMVR link cable or virtual desktop? As with all things, there's no definite answer, so here's my conclusion. If you mainly play sim racing games like Automobilista 2 or Microsoft Flight Simulator, or perhaps a space trading game like Elite Dangerous, where you will generally be seated, then absolutely go for the AMVR link cable. It's affordable, gives great performance, and you won't notice the cable if you aren't moving around. Plus, it has a sneaky little trick, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. Me, personally, I play a lot of dynamic VR games like Contractors, Into the Radius, and Half-Life Alex, and I hate being tethered. So for me, it's virtual desktop all the way. Or perhaps you play a bit of both, seated and standing VR, so maybe both options would be a good fit for you. Plus. Purchasing virtual desktop and the AMVR link cable will cost you about £46 in the UK, which is still £43 cheaper than the official Oculus cable. Remember, I'm here as your guide, and as always, it's your choice. So shout out in the comments below and tell me which you prefer. Before I end the video, remember I said the AMVR link cable had a secret feature. This little breaker box has a USB-C port for extra charging capacity. The link cable will charge your headset, but eventually wouldn't be able to keep up. But plug a USB-C charging cable in here and you could literally play for days on end and not worry about the battery discharging. How cool is that? I think I said butt plug in that last sentence. Oh well. <laughs> That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.